Coming up on News 35, the USF community speaks out about the recent alleged rapes. USF puts on the 7th Annual Human Rights Film Festival, and we take a look at a fun new class about food, culture, and media. All that and more coming up. Comprehensive news coverage for the University of San Francisco. This is News 35, your campus news and information leader. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Kate Elston. By now, we've all heard about the alleged rapes that have occurred at USF. In response to the scary news, students are speaking out. On Thursday, February 19th, over 150 students, faculty members, and staff members came together to discuss these rapes at the first of what will hopefully be several more forums. It was an hours-long heated discussion where the USF community expressed anger, concern, frustration, and sadness about the rapes. Unfortunately, USF TV was asked not to bring cameras to the event with the concern that certain students may not open up if being filmed. However, News 35 was able to bring you this in-depth look at the rapes and the other issues that were discussed at the forum. On a side note, though, before we begin the segment, is that this segment was produced before any possible new developments may have arisen in the story. The forum took place at the new Kalmanowitz Amphitheater, where over 100 people, men, women, students, and faculty, came together to discuss the rape. The amphitheater proved to be a place that promoted discussion. I think it lent to students really being open um, I think it lent to students really truly being authentic. Um, students were able to articulate their feelings and their thoughts. I just felt like that's what a university environment and what a, a, a Jesuit education is all about. Junior Alicia Maldonado contributes the high turnout to the importance of this issue. Statistics vary but show that anywhere from one in four to one in six women has been or will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. The USF community was eager to learn how to spread awareness about and prevent rape. I just think that it just affects so many people. And it's just something that is so, it's, it's so much about control that, you know, people need to really come together in order to combat it. And so I think that people really understand that and they really wanted to do something about it. One topic at the forum was whether or not the administration did enough to alert the students of the situation. Like, we should get more than just a public safety bulletin about this. If there was a school shooting on campus, you know, like, there would be more means of communication than an email. And I don't mean, I think this is, like, just as serious an offense of violence as we view guns in this society. So I think that they need, that our administration needs to do a lot to bulk up how they would inform students and how they should inform students. Uh, there was some uh, um, dismay about, um, and misunderstanding about why more information wasn't put out. In regards to the specific circumstances, what resident hall, where were the victims from, those are things that um, are uh, are significant to the case, number one, and significant to the privacy of the victim. And so uh, I hoped I made that clear that uh, we just can't release that type of information, and, and we won't, and, 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 and mainly to protect the, 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 the victims and, and, and the, and the uh, investigation of the case. Now, if we thought that any of the information was pertinent or it's something that could help better protect um, uh, our community, then we would be bound to do so, but uh, that wasn't the case. Another topic that dominated most of the forum's discussion was the values of ROTC and its presence on campus. When you bring it into this situation where we have an alleged rape of four women on our campus, um, and the alleged rapist is an ROTC student, it just brings up a lot of feelings of what the military stands for and what it's teaching and what it represents. And it's an institution in our society that really it reinforces these like patriarchal masculinity, like systems of oppression. And it just it's so scary, like, and it's so frustrating and so angering when you read statistics and story after story about even rape within the military, rape within military personnel of, like, you're more likely to be raped as a woman in the military than die in warfare. Maldonado was glad that that topic was openly discussed, but wasn't sure if that link was justified. Um, so there was some outrage on ROTC's part that said that they didn't think that it was blame that had to be put on ROTC or the military. Rape doesn't just occur in the military and 
what happens, you know, when rape occurs in the dorms, you know, are we going to tear the dorms down or, you know, what are we going to do then? You know, what blame are we going to place then? And I also heard students who were upset about, like, maybe going in one direction, like maybe being really too focused on ROTC and didn't have anything to do with, like, the issue of the rape. And what I want to say to those people is, if you want to talk about something else, talk about it, like, bring it up. The reason why that was focused on was because one student after another, we kept bringing it up. So if you want to change the conversation, if you think there's something else important to this, bring it there. Like that's what this community, creating community, is about. I think that um, again, uh, that type of student-led campus community forum is a place in which those type of questions should um, um, have an opportunity to be addressed. Making sure that we address specific issues and making sure that we bring those issues back so that we can effectively talk about and effectively find solutions to rape on our campus. Lawson said about one or two rapes are reported each year. And of course those are fully investigated and uh, we always encourage the victim to go to the police because uh, we can uh, investigate a case to a certain point but then we need to turn it over to the San Francisco police. But that doesn't mean they that they're not occurring. As, as we well know there's probably many occurring. So what's next? Escobar and a group of students have composed a list of steps they would like to see the university take immediately. More comfortable anonymous ways for students to report assaults, creation of a women's center on campus, curriculum development, um, planning vigils on campus, women's student groups, ROTC in forms of either reforming the program or students who are more passionate about getting rid of the program. Uh, ongoing awareness and programming that can happen now. One thing is certain, this student outrage, curiosity and involvement must be present before an emergency. Lawson encourages students to be proactive and use resources at your disposal now, like self-defense classes and university meetings. And if we can use an incident, which is a terrible incident like this, as some kind of a catalyst to get people interested again in, in doing something about it. We don't want this to die. We want this to, to stay alive. It's our responsibility as the students, when we get the information, to make sure that we run with it and to make sure that we don't let it die. I'm Kate Elston with News 35.